today I'm going to talk about Platformatic DB. But first, a little bit about me. There's a picture of my face in case you don't know what I look like. And I'm an independent educator. I'm working with Platformatic, helping them with developer advocacy. I've been coding for over 20 years. It increases every time I say it. I really love helping developers learn. So over the past few years, I've kind of moved a bit more towards the educational side of things. I've been doing quite a lot of blogging, some workshops and training, a lot more of that kind of stuff. I'm also an Egghead instructor and working on my first course for Egghead, which will be about using Fastify. So yeah, if you want to check out my blog, I'm writing at simonplend.com and I'm on Twitter and GitHub as Simon Plend. And that's all about me. So a little bit about where we're going to go today in the next sort of 20 minutes or so. So we're going to be looking at like what it takes to build an API. Um, probably a lot of you in this room have experienced building APIs or maybe working with APIs day to day. And then we're going to look at Platformatic DB, which is one of the tools that we've released recently. We'll look at some of its features, how we can create an API with it. There'll be a bit of live coding because I love the danger. And then we're going to look at how we actually customize this kind of stuff. Because the thing that you commonly run across is like, it can be hard to customize out of the box stuff. And we'll see what we can do there. And then we'll look at some of the foundations that Platformatic DB is built on, understand a bit better. And then kind of what kind of journey and path you can kind of take using it yourself. So what does it take to build an API? Well, Typically, we're going to want to design our API interface. So here we've got kind of an example of some REST routes. So we've got get movies, get movies ID, post, delete, and so on. All the kind of RESTful stuff you'd expect. Or we might be building a GraphQL API, so we'll need to be designing our mutations and our queries and so on. So we really need to think about this kind of stuff up front because it can become a bit difficult to change later on, especially once we've got people consuming our API. And we've got to decide on a database system, and we're going to use Mongo, we're going to use MySQL or Postgres. There's a lot of different things to think about there. And then we've actually got to go and design and create our database schemas. So we, we probably had a chat with people and figured out what kind of data we need to store. But then we need to figure out the tables or the queries, the fields rather, and how we're going to organize that and the relationships between them. And then we'll probably need to integrate a database library. So we'll have a look around, figure out which one's going to work best for us. Do we want to use an ORM? Do we want to use a query builder? Do we want to use something much more raw and kind of native drivers? So there's a lot to, to think about there. And NPM install is kind of just the tip of that iceberg because we've then got to go and actually integrate it into our application and configure it and figure out things like connection pooling and all that kind of fun stuff. So. Once we've done that, we've actually kind of got the base of our API. We haven't actually built anything. So we're going to need to wire up all our, in this case, if we're building a RESTful API, all the kind of create, read, update, delete, all the kind of standard stuff that you expect from every API. And we're going to have to do that for every single entity that we have. And then we've probably got some weird edge cases we'll need to map between things. And we probably want to add some request validation there to make sure that we give good feedback to our users, people who are using the API, but also so that, you know, we can actually have a bit better security and we're not just shoving any old data into our API or into our database. And then we want to document it because there's no, no, no good having an API if people don't know how to use it. So that can be quite a time consuming process going ahead and actually documenting everything. And then there's really a whole lot more. This is kind of just, just the basics because you've got to think about metrics and monitoring and logging and all these kind of extra things that build up building an API. So not necessarily straightforward, but definitely kind of essential foundations. So Platformatic DB is in beta and it's an open source HTTP server that's built with Node.js. But it's kind of a little bit more, as we'll see in a minute. It provides flexible tools. And you can see here in this beautiful diagram, we've got you know, a typical kind of stack may look like you have your front end. It might be in React or Vue or SolidJS, whatever kind of front end you may be building. And then you can build an API with Platformatic DB. If you want, you can have REST 
uh, interface, you can also have a GraphQL interface. And effectively, that's built on top of an SQL mapper, which is looking at your database. So you give it some connection details. We'll see this in just a minute. And it can connect to MySQL, Postgres, SQLite. And it will then map those and generate APIs automatically for you. So let's say it supports REST and GraphQL. But then also you can see that little white box there, your code. So we'll kind of dig into that a little bit later, what that means for like custom functionality. And then we've also got database migrations. So that's kind of an essential part of setting up our database, getting all the, all the structure in place. And also then as we evolve and add features to our API, we're going to want to go ahead and actually say add new fields or new relationships. So it's currently in public beta. And you can try it out if you go to oss.platformatic.dev. So it's fully open source, as are all the tools that you'll find there. And let's take a little look at what it actually has baked in. So I said it's a bit more than just an HTTP server for Windows.js. So the kind of the main entry point that if you're working with Platformatic DB day to day is a command line interface. So the Platformatic DB command allows you to then spin up a server. And as I mentioned, it supports like these four databases out of the box. Doesn't support NoSQL at the moment. It's possible, but because we're kind of kind of schema focused at the moment, uh, there's obviously you know kind of making that work in with object or with document sort of databases is a little trickier, but there's potential. There's definitely an issue there if you want to upvote that. And we've got built-in support, as I mentioned, for database migrations and also for seeding. So if you want to kind of populate your database initially. So on the REST side of things, you, you get this automatic REST API map for you. And you also get interactive documentation using Swagger UI, which you may be familiar with. And that's all powered by an open API 3 schema which is compatible with lots of different tooling you can use for like testing and documentation and so on. And then GraphQL wise, we've got this automatic GraphQL API supports all the kind of things you'd hope for like Apollo Federation. We also have graphical built in so you can go and actually be working with that in development, calling your API and testing everything. And there's a full generative GraphQL schema. So it's worth mentioning that with the CLI tool, you can actually export your open API and your GraphQL schema. This is not like you're locked in and everything's hidden in a box away. And also it supports authentication and authorization. So at the moment it's with JWT and Webhook and HTTP headers, which you must only use in development because that's a very insecure way of doing things. And then there's authorization via role-based access control. So the kind of things you'd expect, like, oh, we're going to say this user is an admin and they have the rights to read and update and delete and do everything you might expect. So for JWT, that looks like we're not, we're not at the moment, we don't have an authentication service. So the idea is you would have your app authenticating, say, with a third party, like Auth0 or something like that. And then that would send back a JSON web token with all the kind of user metadata and your app would then send that through to Platformatic DB to the API that you built with that. And then you, that will automatically decode that token and verify that the user is allowed to go and access, for example, those routes in the API. And then similarly for webhooks, when a request comes through to Platformatic DB, it can be configured to then call a third party authentication service, or it could be your own if you're running your own, something like Keycloak and then you'll get the, re the response data. So there's all that kind of stuff baked in so you've got everything you need for building an API. So that's enough slides for now. I think Verity has very kindly offered to hold the microphone. Okay, so we have, I've got a directory set up. It's just new package JSON and Platformatic installed as a dependency. So we're going to now run MPX Platformatic DB and in it, and so that's going to spin up a bunch of new stuff for us. And we can see that it's created quite a few files over here. Whilst that, we're going to actually install these few dependencies. So these dependencies here are just for basically getting type hinting. So you can use JavaScript or TypeScript. 
with Platformatic DB, but we're just going to use JavaScript today. Just nice to have some of the type hinting as well. So whilst that's loading, we'll take a look at Platformatic DB.json. And that is actually kind of the core thing, which is, is kind of the starting point for Platformatic DB. So you're going to configure your server, like where your host name is, the IP address, port number, things like that. It's worth mentioning these are all can all be actually replaced with like placeholders, like variables. So you can actually have it coming from environment variables. So I certainly don't recommend if you're putting a connection string in, you'll probably end up having a password, say if it's Postgres. So you shouldn't probably have that committed in your code base. So we support environment variable replacement. Here we've enabled the GraphQL API. You can tell it tables to ignore as well. And that, so they don't get, if there's tables you don't want mapped onto your REST or GraphQL API. Then might tell us where the migrations directory is. And we'll take a look in there in just a moment. We've also got a plugin, which we'll use to do some customization later. And then types are being automatically generated for us. So you can see here that as we go along and as we add entities, that we'll end up with these TypeScript definitions getting built up for us that will give us type hinting and all the kind of things you'd expect there. So here in the migrations directory, just as kind of an initialization thing, it's created an up, so 001. So this is going to create a table for us with movies, with an ID and a title. And then we've got the down migration as well. So kind of fairly standard sort of migration setup. So to actually run that, we're going to say MPX Platformatic DB migrate, and that's going to apply our migrations for us with a deprecation warning for some reason. We'll find out about that later and file an issue. And so you can see it's generated the types as well. So we've got types here for our, for our movies as well. So this is actually here in our code base, and we can go and commit these types rather than them being hidden away somewhere else. So now we've actually got our database actually set up, and we can see, because we're using SQLite here, we've got the db.sqlite. So we're now going to actually start our server. And now that that's listening, we can actually head over into the browser and take a look. Cool. So we've got the open a API documentation that I mentioned earlier. And we can see here that we've got get movies, we've got post movies, all the kind of roots and, and verbs that you'd expect. So let's go ahead and actually create a movie. And let's have a look where it is. Wait, we're on post, right? Movies. There we go, cool. Uh, there's a little hidden try it out button. Okay, so we're going to add a very modern movie, The Wizard of Oz, and we're going to execute that. So what we should see down here, yeah, let me zoom in a little, sorry. We've now got a response come back and it's created The Wizard of Oz for us. And we can verify this in just some kind of browser magic by heading over here. And we'll do a curl and thank you to the cast of, <laughs> of people holding this. I do really appreciate it. So let's have a look. Movies. And it's not connected because that's the wrong port number. Cool. So 3042. And cool. So we've got the Wizard of Oz coming back. So it's a regular REST API. And that's automatically been inferred from our database schema, like in our, in our actual database tables. So when Platformatic DB is connected to it, it's able to actually generate the open API schema that then powers all of this. And then we've got and um, the REST API there. Now let's have a look. We've also got a GraphQL API, and we're going to take a look at that over here. So that's in graphical. As I mentioned, that's baked in. And we'll clear the stuff from previous. And what we're going to go and do now, I'm going to cheat a little bit because you probably don't want to watch me write a database migration. I don't know, maybe you do. But I'm going to create a new database migration. We're going to add some movie quotes. We've got our movie, Wizard of Oz, and we're going to add a quote for it, which we'll see if I can remember. So we're going to do 002 and... 
drop that in and then we'll do our down migration as well. And that will have a setup to get rid of it should we ever need to roll back. So that's going to drop the quotes table. So we've got quotes, then we can see we've got a foreign key here which references the movie ID. So that will allow us to have relationships between the two tables. So now we need to go back over here and say MPX Platformatic DB migrate. So our server's still running over in the other terminal here. And you can see that it's gone ahead and generated that. And then that's triggered actually the server automatically reloading. So everything's hot reloading as we go along. And if we go back actually to Swagger UI and refresh, you'll see that we've got movies and we've got quotes and it's also supports nested as well. So we could get back all the quotes for a specific movie and so on. So you've got some nice nested relationships in our REST API. But let's have a look at the GraphQL side of things. And I'm going to cheat a little again and grab a query to get all the quotes. And we'll do this in graphical. So I'm going to now refetch that schema over here, just on the side that's refetching the GraphQL schema from the server. Worth mentioning because everything's getting hot reloaded. Graphical doesn't necessarily know that stuff changed, so you need to refetch as you're going along. So it's going to get all the quotes back, and then it's going to get the movie for each quote and the title for that. So if we execute that, there's no quotes right now. So let's go ahead and add a quote. And the quote we're going to add, oh, fortunately, I don't have to remember my favorite quotes from The Wizard of Oz. So I'm going to actually drop this one in here. And now we can actually go ahead and create this quote so and then it's getting the data back so if you're not familiar with graphql this part here is actually saying here are the fields i want to get back after i've done things so cool we've got a quote that's been saved and then we can see the movie we can see the title and that's all those relationships were automatically mapped for us and we can actually see everything here in the docs and the sidebar so you can see all the available queries they're getting movies and for getting quotes and we can also see all the mutations that we can run as well. So insert and saving movies and so on. So that's all kind of automatic for us. Now that we have that, so we've got that all set up and then let's have a look. Let's just go curl and see that we can actually access all that same data through, through curl, through the REST interface. Yeah, great. So we can see here that we've actually got all of that data coming back here. Cool. So all the data is in our database. Everything's automatically getting mapped into those GraphQL and REST APIs. So let's actually take a little look back at a bit more of the, some of the features that we've got here. Cool. Thank you very much. So we've kind of covered <laughs> very for for both microphone holders. Thank you very kindly, Verity and Alex. So out of the box functionality, that's kind of what you get out of the box. You put a bit of config in, you get all these kind of features for you. So that's pretty nice. But the best part is really what comes next. And you'll often find with different tools that you get lots of nice stuff out of the box, but when you want to customize it, things get a little bit hairy and you kind of get a bit stuck and maybe a bit frustrated because you can't really customize it. But what we've done with Platformatic DB allows you to actually go ahead and really heavily customize everything. So you can add custom API, REST API route in any way that you want. There's no kind of particular thing. If you're familiar with Express or Fastify or Nest, or it's that kind of sort of root definition. And then you're going to have be able to actually go and extend the GraphQL schema that's already there, all the queries and mutations. You can go and add and build on top of all of those. You can use any packages from NPM. It's, it's just going to be a JavaScript file that you're running. It's nothing kind of magic or special there. And you can use all the built-in Node.js modules. So at this point, it's kind of sounding very much like a Node.js application because it is. And the, the CLI that actually comes with Platformatic DB is built on top of Fastify, which is a web framework, which I describe as sitting somewhere kind of between Express and Nest.js. So Express is very bare bones, doesn't really give you much, isn't really very opinionated. 
but very flexible. And then at the kind of far end, you have something like Nest.js, which is super structured, very opinionated, has everything out of the box, the full kitchen sink, and fastifies it some, somewhere in the middle. So it provides validation, it provides logging, provides a couple of other things, um, but it's you know still a bit more bare bones than, say, something like Nest. And then we've got Mercurius, which is a GraphQL adapter for Fastify, and that's powering all the GraphQL functionality that you see in Platformatic DB. And then we've got at databases, which is another library, and it's a type safe database library. So kind of sits somewhere between writing raw SQL and an ORM like Prisma. So it actually allows you to kind of access things with a nice sort of fluent interface. And you can also run raw queries for it too. So that's the kind of there's PostGrader. I should have the logo up here, but PostGrader is what we're using for migrations. So all kind of really popular and successful open source tooling. And because it's built on top of that, it means that we're able to actually expose all of that through Platformatic DB. So if you want to go and add custom REST API routes, say there's something that isn't automatically mapped, you can go ahead and actually add your own route or you can go ahead and extend the GraphQL schema. And within those, within the routes or within your, within your extended GraphQL schema, you might want to set the resolvers or set the root handler to use the Platformatic SQL mapper. So this SQL mapper is the key kind of thing that Platformatic DB is built on and what it's doing to do all that inferring of, oh, okay, th these are the fields, these are the relationships. And you have access to that. You have access to these entities. You can do find and update and so on. So you don't have to be writing raw SQL. But if you want, if you there's stuff that isn't covered by that and you want to go and write some you know, 20 table query join, then you can go ahead and do all that. You've got the access to go and actually write those raw SQL queries. And if still that's not enough, you know, and you want to actually get rid of those, all the layers of extraction, you can actually use all the platformatic packages standalone. And they can you can use them to build your own application in any way that you want. So really kind of pick and build as you choose. We have, we're gonna do a bit of customizing our APIs. So let me grab some of what we've got here. So we're gonna drop in another migration. So we've got our movies and we've got our quotes for our movies, but we want people to like it because we're gonna build an incredible social network. No, we're not. So we're going to drop down the terminal, drop in, we'll close some of these files we've got open here. And we're going to drop in 003, and that's going to, we're going to be adding a likes field to the quotes table so that we can then count the number of likes that someone's given for their quotes. And then we're going to do a down migration, undo SQL. If I could type undo. Cool. So that will drop up that column. Yeah, column quotes. I think it should be likes. There we go. Cool. Okay, so now we've got that in place, we can actually go ahead again and run the migration command. And that should trigger everything to restart automatically because those entities are getting written again and, and so on. So now Platformatic DB has picked up the updated schema for everything. And we can actually head over into graphical and we can then refresh our schema here and we'll get all quotes. So if we get all quotes here, oh, we'll, we can go and now add in, so you've got likes. So the really nice thing if you've never used graphical before is that it's got sort of type hinting for everything as well because it knows the schema. Cool, so there's no likes unsurprisingly because we haven't liked anything yet. So we've got that likes field automatically coming through. And what we're going to go and do now is actually um, add some likes into our schema. So we need to actually go and customize things. So I mentioned earlier, we've got this plugin and we didn't really look at it. So here in our platformatic db.json, we've got plugin.js, which is referenced. So that's this file over, here. not that file. So plugin.js. And right now, because we're using JavaScript, it's importing those types using JS, JS types. If this was TypeScript, which it can be, and it supports TypeScript out of the box. If you've got the TypeScript compiler there, we'll just automatically use it for you. So we've got all these kind of 
type hinting and stuff. So right now this is a Fastify plugin. So this is what I mean, like this is effectively, you can put anything you want in this file and you can actually nest things as well. If you're familiar with Fastify, it's all a kind of plugin model. And so it allows you to actually kind of separate your concerns and split it out into separate modules. So we've got this module here. And what we're going to do is go and actually do something with this likes field and add some custom functionality. In. So let me drop over. Oh, one, one other thing to mention is we've got those types, which we briefly looked at earlier. But the, as we've been going along and running migrations, those have automatically been getting generated. If you hate types and hate type hinting, you are very welcome to turn that off. You can just switch it off to false, but it's on by default. So cool. So we've got this here. Now let's go and cheat a little bit. And we're going to extend our GraphQL schema. So we don't have time today to also do REST and GraphQL, but we are going to drop this in to do, cool. So this is going to extend our GraphQL schema and it's going to add a new type query or new query rather called top quotes. And now we, we can save that and we'll see our server gets restarted automatically. And we can actually go ahead and add in a resolver for that. So we'll add in this resolver and this resolver. Let's give that a bit of formatting. Cool. Let's take a quick look at the resolver. So as I mentioned, this is all built. The GraphQL part is all built on top of Mercurius. So if you go and look at the Mercurius docs, GraphQL here is Mercurius. And so you can access all the kind of methods that are available there. So we've got, we're saying, okay, for the top quotes, quotes query, the resolver is, and here's this SQL mapper stuff that I talked about earlier. So app.platformatic.entities is all the entities that have been mapped. And if we were to actually like go ahead and type this out, it would be return away app.platformatic.entities and dot quote, ooh, type hinting. And that's quite nice to be able to actually just have that all there. Similar to if you've used something like Prisma where you've got all the types coming through for you automatically. And so here we're gonna say, okay, the top quotes are ones where the likes are greater than or equal to three. Cool. So we've set that up, it's in, it's automatically restarted. But now if we go and actually query for those top quotes, we will add that over here in graphic. Need to go and refetch our GraphQL schema. So anytime you see an, a squiggly red line, it's not a spelling mistake. It's a schema, but it doesn't know. So, I mean, it could be a spelling mistake. Cool. So we're going to get the top quotes. There are sadly no top quotes yet. So to actually go and actually add an increment on the quotes, we're going to add a mutation in. So let's grab a new mutation. So we're going to extend the schema and drop in a mutation, go. Cool. So we'll just go back up here and we can drop it in. Cool. So this is going to do, this is effectively kind of defining the schema parts. We're saying like quote, it's gonna accept the quote ID and it's gonna return an integer, which will be like the number of likes. Cool, so we've done that. And then again, similarly to what we did for the query, we're going to need to add in a resolver Make sure I don't miss a brace. Okay, cool, cool. So now we're going to go down. Thank you very much. Let's do a little bit of formatting, cool. So we've got this like quote mutation. And so that's gonna allow us here, we can see we, we can access app.platformatic has DB and SQL. So as I mentioned earlier, we can drop down to writing raw SQL. My editor does not know how to format the code. Never mind. Cool. So the nice thing here is we've got SQL and it does all the kind of um, escaping that you'd expect to keep our SQL queries safe because if we're dropping in stuff like user data that's come through, we want it to be escaped for us. So that will happen automatically because we're using this SQL function here. And so here we're going to say update the quotes and we're just going to incre increment the likes column by one where the quote ID is this and then we'll get back the number of likes and then send it back. So here we've defined this like quote mutation and what we should be able to go now, go and do now is to go and actually like that wizard of Ozquote. Do, do, do. 
Cool. So we'll drop that in. We'll refetch the schema. So recognize it. So that Wizard of Oz quote that we saw earlier, we're going to go and like it. And we're going to like it again. And we've got two quotes. And then we've got three quotes, or three likes rather, and then four quotes. It's probably the most popular quote on our app. And now we're going to go and get the top quotes. And we'll see that it's now showing up. So we've been able to fairly simply, admittedly, I copied and pasted. I know it's cheating. But with a fairly minimal amount of code, we've been able to actually go and actually extend our GraphQL schema, add in a query, add in a mutation, and access all the same kind of stuff that Platformatic DB is using under the hood, and also drop down to raw SQL. And so that kind of gives a little bit of a flavor of some of the kind of customization that's possible. If we wanted to, we could have gone and installed any other NPM module and used that here too. And I am pleased to say, and I'm sure you're pleased to hear, thank you very much. Please round of applause. That is the last time for everyone. Thank you very much. So let's drop back over here. And then lastly, we, we don't really have time to jump into it today, but the kind of last level of customization, if you really don't want to, to use Platformatic DB, this is not the only thing we have built and, and there are more tools that are in progress, but this is these are the packages that Platformatic DB is built on. So the SQL mapper stuff that I mentioned about, the open API parts, the GraphQL parts. There's a newer one, which I didn't get a chance to demo today, but SQL events, which actually uses MQ emitter. So you can do server sent events, web sockets, GraphQL subscriptions, all that kind of good stuff. And we'd really love it if you gave it a try, oss.platformatic.dev. We've already got a really lovely active community of contributors. We're also on Discord as well, which I know Adam will love. And you can find us on Twitter as well, Matic. And you can find me, Obscured at the top corner there, at Simon Plend on Twitter. Of course, come grab me at the pub. We do have one of these lovely t-shirts I'm modeling, which is Platformatic with some London stuff. Please take them so that I don't have to take them to the pub. Thank you. And that's all. Thank you very much. Oh, firstly, it looks really cool. So thank you for showing it. How would you go about restricting a field from a generated API? So if you want to like not have it showing up in the, in the, in yeah, the actual so API? Say you didn't want likes to be public information, for example. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So let me just go. So it's all configurable. If I hadn't cleared my history. So let's quickly look. So in the Platformatic CLI configuration, sorry, Platformatic DB. So it should be, actually, I, I think we had an example here in the code. Let me have a quick look here. Cool. So we said ignore the versions table. I think it is possible to ignore a specific field. And I'm going to check and if it's not here oh no it is here cool it doesn't mention about fields okay so it doesn't look like we can do specific fields at the moment i think there might be an issue open for that and if if you try it out and you're keen to do that then please please upvote it but yeah i'll know they're done and find out more cool thank you i'm assuming pull requests accepted oh very very welcome yeah. especially if the documentation is wrong because there's a good chance i wrote some of it on a similar note to excluded fields, is there a way to do sort of like computed fields? As in like, sometimes you don't just want to spit out exactly what comes from the database. Sometimes you might want to have some formatting or some sort of like computed property. Is that possible or is that? Yeah. So uh, let me think. So if you want to do computed stuff, so would that be say, you know, you're sending back a bunch of data, like some quotes, and you want to, you know, combine a bunch of fields and then send it as another field name or something like that. Yeah, I mean, like it could be something like it could be some like template string or it could be something yeah. like if you're doing like accounting, you might want to not send the raw values, but some calculated values. Yeah, yeah. Got it. So you can do that. And it's with entities. And cool. So we've got a feature called entity. So this is built into the SQL mapper. So the examples here are actually kind of, if you're using SQL mapper by yourself, 
I'm pretty sure there's an issue for me to go and write the usage example for PlatformaticDB, but this is, is for, you wouldn't have to do obviously the database setup because PlatformaticDB is taking care of that. But you can effectively hook onto an entity and say, okay, the page when find gets called, which is obviously going to get called if you're doing like a get for, for all the particular pages, for example. And then you can actually go ahead and call the, the original find method with whatever options were passed through and then actually map and do your own stuff on it. So, you know, here is fully, whatever fully custom code. So I think that would handle the kind of computer fields use case you were talking about. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Hi, I'm curious why you made the, the design decision of um, skipping having an explicit declaration of all your models like Prisma or traditional ORMs do in favor of just, just inferring it from, from the database migrations? Yeah, so Matteo, who's a CTO and co-founder, has done a talk on this at a couple of conferences. So if you drop onto Twitter, you'll find a link to it there. I can, I can probably share it somewhere. But he's done a whole talk on why he wouldn't use an ORM. And kind of a lot of it from his perspective is around the potential bloat that it can bring to the application. And also at some point, the kind of performance impact that it can have as well. And so it's really about kind of avoiding that kind of those potential issues. So because you're thinking more about like an explicit ORM where you're defining it. No, I'm not thinking it in terms of defining classes and methods. So okay. I'm just thinking of right now, if I was a developer and I was to join a new team that was yeah. using Platformic, yeah. I would have no easy way of seeing what all the schemas are apart from having to inspect the database. Okay, okay, directly. yeah, 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 absolutely. So yeah, this is definitely a problem that we need to solve at the moment. We were chatting about it the other day, so we need a way so you can see the state of everything that's there. So you, you would want to be able to just see effectively every, every table and all the fields and stuff. Yeah. So you can actually, we can do this, it's... Let me just toggle this on quickly. Sorry if you're really desperate to get to the pub. Cool. So we can do dashboard. This was released last week. So dashboard and metrics. So we've actually got a built-in dashboard now, and then we'll rest it should restart for us. Cool. Restarted. Okay, great. So if we then go over here. We can now see the beautiful Platformatic DB dashboard, and it's got kind of the application metrics. So one of the things we didn't cover today is that you can actually, if you enable metrics, you get data, you get metrics that can go into Prometheus. You also get all, all the kind of metrics that you would expect that you can go into Grafana as well, or other box. So you can see all them here on the dashboard. Then you've got GraphQL, you can see your config, all the kind of stuff we were looking at earlier. But to kind of see what tables are there, you can then go here and we've got this table view, which actually shows the data. So it's quite nice in development. So you can kind of, if you don't really want to curl everything or use graphical, you can kind of just jump in here and then go and edit records and, and view. So hopefully that would give the kind of view that you were talking about there. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Cheers.